don't see nothing. Nothing to do with the white part. Obviously, there's no white part here. But really? Roman losing the title at WrestleMania. Yeah. Better has to happen. Yes. Right? And yeah. obviously, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, and I. I, I fully expect Roman to lose the title and that they, they need to cash in on her. However, come back. What if they need cash in on set? I, I can't know. see that happening because they're building up Drew, Drew and Punk. True. And, and, and I, that, that has a story to do. And, and not only like that, but the other thing on that is, is that if Cody wins, Damien cashes in on him. Now Cody's like, oh, I got it. But then I kind of got screwed. And then he got away from me. Him. And yeah. now you have this whole new chase. And remember, both Cody and the Judgment Day are on board. Yeah. Romanism. So you have Damien Cashin on Cody, and then this little alliance that Cody's putting together to take on the bloodline, then you start taking on Judgment Day. It writes yourself. But then the only issue is, is that you have both the World Heavyweight and the uh, Undisputed title on Raw. You don't have a title on SmackDown. Yeah, they can fix that. Uh, yeah. I mean, so, SmackDown doesn't have a title now. So, <laughs> man, man, I need to pause real quick. Because we actually ah, we yes. have a very special presentation we want to do. Ladies and gentlemen, hey. Mr. Ben Pepper, put your hands together. All right. Yeah. So, so ladies and gentlemen, we want to preface this? Yeah. So, uh, myself and Michael, uh, we've been doing Awesome also Mania now for a long time. Oh, so long. Um, and it's fed out into a podcast, uh, which we do once a month. Um, and we have started putting together our own WWE, uh, AW, etc., etc., Hall of Fame, the Awesome Mania Hall of Fame. Um, none of that will be possible without Ben Penrod, who is the man who, some 13 years ago, decided to bring Awesome Kong to DC. This is the man you have to thank for being here today. Um, the very first Awesome Kong happened in one of the small rooms downstairs that are now just the gaming room. It was like 40 tables, five guests, and it was the best thing to ever happen to DC. And it has only grown since. And as such, um, we would like to induct Ben Penrod into the Awesome Mania Hall of Fame. And for that, we actually have a plaque put together for Mr. Penrod. If you would please give this man a standing ovation. Um, Big, but not a long one, because we've got about 45 minutes. Yeah, you get like 30 seconds. All right. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a whole lot. I have no remarks, but good. Thank, thank you, guys. I, this means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Um, I'm really glad that uh, you know I was had I had you guys at the sh you know the show the first year. Uh -huh. I think uh, I think Ben you were working at somebody's table the first. Yeah, year? I was working at the uh, dog table the first yeah. time. I remember seeing you at the table, um, and uh, I think we did uh, Awesome Mania the second year. We had uh, we had Mike Jones as a yeah. It was it was me, Joe Carabao, Dan Oates, and Mark, uh, Mike Jones. Yeah, and so um, you know I don't know. Uh, I guess it's just, I mean, I love wrestling, I love wrestling, so, you know, wrestling is like the nerdiest stuff there is, so it just kind of made sense. It's just as nerdy as comic books, if not worse. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we've all kind of fit together. It's like superheroes in a ring, yeah. they fight, they wear tights and fight, you know. So uh, it, it made sense, I guess, but uh, no, thank you guys so much for this. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Cool. 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 Mike, give me your chair. <laughs> you, you, uh, get, get so, so just to let you know, Penma, we've actually been trying to do this for like the last maybe year and a half. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're really happy to fun. All right, so what do we, what do we want to talk about? Yes. 
already did that, Joey. <laughs> Do you think with Seth's past betrayal, he will turn on Cody and Mania? We can only hope. <laughs> Do you think The Rock will turn on Roman or Roman will turn on Rock? Somebody's gonna turn on somebody. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> So as to call it a wolf on a yes. Yeah. I, think, I think the way they set it up, they set it up perfectly for Roman and Brock to turn yeah, on each other. Definitely. It's which is gonna be so much better in the yeah. in the long run than if he had just showed up and, and had a match. Yeah, they like, into the best storyline. Yeah, it yeah. actually works out a lot better. And then the way they set it, like I feel like you know, I, I don't want Cody to win the title at WrestleMania, so like I feel like that's the only hope is that that there's still a Roman and Rock story down the line. I, I was just saying, you know, I hope Cody will win and then thank the Priest will catch Dude, that would be so good. What if they end the story and then they start making a Priest story? Right? Exactly. Yeah. That would be so good. like, he finished the story. <laughs> now it's all like, yeah. Cody, Cody will always be better chasing a title. Yeah. Always. And that title should be the yeah, I, I, I do not want to put Cody and Gunther in a ring together. I'm sorry. Unless Gunther's actually going to kill him. Cody's <laughs> <laughs> still my favorite mid Carter. Yeah. Oh. I mean, what's it's not wrong. <laughs> what else we got? Oh, no, I want to throw one thing. I'm waiting for. We have a microphone. Use it. Oh, I can. I can actually talk to everyone. Everyone here. Uh huh. Oh, I use the microphone. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm waiting for the Rock to do uh -huh. is to pull the high chief card. He hasn't mm -hmm. done that yet. Like, I know he acknowledged Roman is the tribal chief, mm -hmm. but to pull the high chief card and say that, hey, I'm ranked higher than you. Mm -hmm. Why are they doing that? I feel like that's one of the ways they could twist it just for the fact of getting someone. It may not be necessarily that one for it that The Rock does it, but somehow it feels like he's going to pull that card. Kind of like how he's pulling the boss thing out now. I, I don't think he needs to. He I just needs to go do on the rock. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, but to a point though, I mean, he could play the card of like my grandfather is the high chief here in my idea. Yeah. So like he could kind of pull that card. No, I, I asked him a question. I mean, he answered it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were trying to say something. Oh, no, no, I, I'm, I'm a little obnoxious about this. <laughs> <laughs> so he's on the card. <laughs> uh, and what else? What else? Oh, well, yeah. We have a microphone. You, you guys can also line up at the microphone. Don't, don't line up at the microphone. That looks so like just look way too organized. What is the off chance New Day will come back and try to go against the Imperium? Yeah. Is the Imperium? No, like Big E can fix a weak turn. So essentially, Big E comes back. Is that what you're asking? Yes. Honestly, I, I don't know if Big E's going to be. I don't, I don't think so. Okay. okay. I've talked to people who like know these guys, yeah. and like, like it doesn't sound like he's coming back. I, yeah. I would, I would love nothing more, but I also, I would love him to be healthy. The like, best thing the WWE need to do is get Biggie on a microphone somewhere. If the, if the, the CM Punk Biggie combination at the presser proved nothing else, yeah. put a microphone in that man's hand and let him. Yeah, I, I love. The, uh, the chemistry between Big E and yeah. CM Punk together at that point. Yeah. They work so well together. So. I, I also don't want Big E to come back. Why? Because, why? Because as a man who gets wheeled around in a wheelchair, um, and every time I see Daniel Bryan get suplexed on his neck, I wince. Yes. Exactly the same thing would be happening with Big E. And I want to feel good about my Big E memories rather than yeah. wincing every time he gets suplexed. Oh, that's actually sweet. Yes, yes, yes. there's a mic. So, uh, how do you guys feel right now about what's going to happen with Trick and Bella? I mean, obviously, it's probably going to be stand and deliver. But do you think that one of them is going to get a title beforehand? It'll be a title match, or is it just that feud does not need a title match? Yeah. That title, that all that feud needs is a big step. Put them in a, a big stipulation match and let them steal the show. Yeah, I, I agree. <coughs> not not every storyline needs a title. Like at all. 
just like Rock and Roman. Yeah. 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 So my question, outside of The Rock, what do you do with Roman Reigns after you drop the title? Um, he goes off into a realm of Pink Thunder. I think he I like how he's actually sharing all that. I think he gives him a break. Yeah, I, think think he he get, I think he goes away for a little while because, and, and, you know, I'm not sure. No, no, no. I think you give him a little bit of a break. He's been, you know, this run's been crazy, and give him a little bit of a break. Absence makes the heart grow fonder, right? And, and, and the rocks feel his heel roots. If, if he could go away and come back, and I get Roman as a baby face against heel rock, there, there's good stuff. There's a lot there, and then, you know, he still hasn't finished, you know, he still hasn't finished the Jay, Jay Uso story. He hasn't, um, you know, uh, Jimmy's there, Solo's better than all three of them. It's like, like he's there, right? Like he's, he's, and he's new and they haven't done a lot of stuff with Solo yet and he's so good. Like, like everything, so he's, everything he does is perfect. And so, I mean, there's a lot, there's still a lot there and there's all the other wrestlers too. Like, he, you know, there's, there's still a lot of stories to tell for Roman, I think, but. And, and I also think by him taking the break for a while, as you said, absence makes the heart grow yeah. fonder. Like, he, he's also yeah. under a part-time contract, so it also helps with that yeah. as well. So, like when he does lose, you know, he can go away because of a part-time deal, and then he can come back at like that next major yeah. show. Like he can like return at SummerSlam. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't think Roman's somebody you're gonna see wrestling when he's 50 years old. So keep him healthy as long as possible, right? Speaking, speaking of healthy, I would wonder how. Like, yeah, he said he was in remission and all that. That stuff takes a toll on your body. It definitely does. Right? It yeah. definitely does take a toll. So, and I'm, I'm going to say it, and it might be a monopoly thing, but man deserves a break. Yeah. He's, he's been champion for three years, which, agree with it or otherwise, he's been kind of the focal point of the company for so long. Just. Give the man a cigar and he'll go on the beach. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's for life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because you're right, that 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 whole thing had to, it does take a toll on yeah. you. And then he's going to touch everything yes. right now. And like, yeah, it would be nice to see someone else at the top of the card and stuff, right? But they will never feel like they're at the top of the card and growing the ground. Because he's been so dominant for so long. So, yeah, I think I think he needs to go away for a while. Yeah. Let's go hug his kids. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, we got a question coming up. Sorry, we're not giving you any answers. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'm pretty new to wrestling. I just got into it with those guys over there. Welcome to the family. Move off the doors. <laughs> I really just wanted to ask a question about, uh, in terms of the female champions, who do y'all think will come out on top, either Rhea or Becky? Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, I, I, I have I have a bigger fantasy book. Fantasy book, no, what do you think it's actually going to happen? A bit of both. Okay. Um, I think Rhea will win. And, and that's because Becky, Becky is the last horse woman she hasn't been. And at, and at that point, she is the apocalypse. <laughs> right? Mommy! <laughs> and plus, mommy always comes out on top. Yeah! Right? So, I think this, this, is, this, is, this is Rhea's mania. Yeah. Like, this, yeah. The storyline is in. Rhea versus Becky, or Becky trying to be the champion. This is Rhea's yeah. story. So Rhea's winning. And so Rhea is, Rhea's on the cover of the video game. And, and, and yeah. there's a reason that Rhea, Rhea transcends wrestling in a way that very few wrestlers ever get to. Um, you know, I I was at a con and we were doing, we had this little like 
hotel party rooms, long story short, but I, mean, I just had wrestling on and people are kind of wandering in, we're giving them snacks and shit, whatever. And, and we just had wrestling on this Friday night and, he, and, and like people would come in and be like, oh, is, uh, is Rhea Ripley on? I'm like, oh, you're a big wrestling fan? They're like, no, we just love her from TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh. Assuming they would beat Gunther at WrestleMania, who would you rather see do this? 
it Sammy or um, Chad Gable? Chad Gable. The story with Chad Gable alone, like I am rooting for that man because like I remember apparently apparently they did not know backstage that he was gonna have his family front row when he lost that last match that he had. Sammy Zayn might be one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. But Chad Gable needs that title. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I actually had a well, not a separate question, but in addition to that, what do you think they do with Sammy then at this year's Mania? Because there's no way they don't have him on the card in some way. Well, what, what's the match that's on, on Monday? Yeah, um, that, it's a multi man match. It's a gauntlet match. No, I think it's just I think that's going to devolve into yeah. into garbage and then turn into a. Don't try to do a multi man match. Man. That's that way, that way, Gunther has a defense for losing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I also, more, I, I also think what you may see is also right. Sammy and uh, Sammy and Shinsuke. So they also be building that a little bit as well. Yeah. 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 So, so because Shinsuke Nakamura is also in the Gauntlet match as yeah. Sammy, so Shinsuke could have easily come out, screw over Sammy, and then have Sammy in return, screw him over, yeah. and then that leads into your WrestleMania match for Shinsuke yeah. versus Sammy. So we're talking a lot about WWE. I was just going to say what about WWE. Want to talk about Impact? We'll get Impact. TNA slash NWA. Yeah, we'll get Impact. Because I heard Cena had an interview recently where they asked him what was his favorite title reign and he said his next one. So now people are debating what he's going to break his record. Who would you rather see in the breaking Ric Flair's record, Cena or Randy? Cena. 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 Oh. I would like to see. <laughs> 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 who would I like to see? Genuinely, who would I like to see break Ric Flair's record? No one. The, to be yeah. honest, Max. You, 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 the question was the question specific about the WWE title or heavyweight title or just title in specific. I think they counted just as like sixteen. For yeah. Him, okay. Because so. I was going to say, if he's just looking forward to the next title, I would say. What's a title he's never held? Maybe the Intercontinental? What? No, that one doesn't have a title. The AEW Champion? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Speaking of which, how about that Okada thing here? That was yeah. bad in the box? That was good. Cool. It was really bad, wasn't it? Kingston was stood in that rain maker for like 10 seconds. <laughs> like, are you gonna spin me or what? Yeah, well, I'll spin you that. It'll be about like 10 minutes. Okada is Okada and uh, the Bucks are wrestling tonight. Then, do you believe Sting is actually retired, or will he come out of retirement? I think he's retired. He's a thousand years old. <laughs> so is Ric Flair. Former Austin Gun. Yes. Too freaking many. But uh, he's Ricky's Terry Funk. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. I will never say never in in wrestling, but yeah. I hope so. I, I feel like he's done. I feel like he's done. He's ready. Wait, but I thought I thought that about Shawn Michaels in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. They offered him like two million dollars. Yeah, what's the deal with Well, you know, come out of retirement for for two million dollars. Come out of retirement too for two million. I think one of the worst matches. I would have like, what's that? How am I going? I'll take the two million. I'll take the two million. Who am I losing to? Okay. They talk about rock and roll. Do they do that in Saudi Arabia? Because that is a money match. I think they do. 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 I don't think that's that happens. Do you guys remember when they had the greatest world war and they had to find Yoko Zuna? Do you guys know that story? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so for those of you who don't know it, when they had the greatest world war from Saudi Arabia, one of the Saudi princes went, we want Yoko Zuna in it. And Vince is like, who died 10 years ago? <laughs> Quick, find someone that looks like him. They'll never know. And they did. What? I don't know. Um, Either, either result, what do you think Jay's role is going to be? Is he going to interfere, especially with the, the solo engineer on the 
sideline. I don't care. <laughs> I think I think here, here's the thing though, like if he's not in the bloodline, what if what if Cody and Seth win and then the bloodline is banned from ringside but then Jay shows up? What's he yeah. doing? Or two yeah. Jay could show up on like during the simulation match. Yeah. With Solo and oh. Jimmy are on the sideline trying to ruin things for Cody and Seth. Jay could a lot of there's a lot of stuff. They could there's, a, there's a lot of possibilities that you can go in and play on that. So it's it's also let's see how things play out on the television too at the same time because there's still yeah. a lot of pieces to the puzzle that are being put together. I just I'm trying to think of a word that I can use. The... <laughs> <laughs> can do to prove to mainstream wrestling fans that they belong in that particular spot. I'm kind of looking at Swerve. I think he's now getting his just due. And I think once he becomes AEW champion, I think that he will be well respected. But what do you guys think about that? That's a very good Can I do be blatant about this for a minute? Please be blatant about it. 90% of the people with wrestling Targeted at live in an area where folks with that kind of skin color ain't too popular. I don't know about that. Uh, uh, no. You go into like certain parts of the country, yeah, I'm sure, but wholeheartedly. The best thing that a person of color can do to prove themselves to wrestling fans is have great matches, which Bianca does. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes that's not even enough. So we 
Mr. 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 It's time to get to a point where what they need to do is wait till all the racist dies. <laughs> and you have the time to for that. <laughs> we gonna be a while. <laughs> I, I mean, oh, and also, I mean, it, it was just kind of, you know, because Ben said personally as well, it's like, look at Mustafa, uh, Mustafa Ali. Yes. You know, look I, what he's done to TNA. Yeah, look at, like, look at what he's done since leaving WWE. He has made himself one of the hottest acts right now in the independent scene and in TNA. Mm -hmm. Dare I bring up one Samoa Joseph? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure, 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 sure. But when you bring up Mustafa Ali, though, but that's still in kind of like the mid card picture, do you think he's, he's, he's the ex to be the champion, my dude? Not the world champion. Yeah, but the world champion, Moose. Moose. Yeah. Moose. Yeah. Moose. Yeah. Moose. Yeah. Moose. Yeah. But is Moose, do you guys consider Moose like, as far as like a main event player? He's the world champion. No matter, I mean, but, Moose. I mean, Saban Moose was a world champion. In, in my opinion. Yeah, he was a world champion. Yeah, and all three of them were good enough to put on the best matches in the world with Kenny and Maybe they were best in the world. They can put a match with anyone. True. The question isn't are they main event material? The question is, is there a spot on the card? Josh Alexander. Anyone here watch what Josh Alexander wrestling? Yes. The biggest missed opportunity in wrestling in the last five years is they did not put a healthy Josh Alexander in a ring with a healthy Kevin Omega. That match would have been 17 stars. And then David's head would have exploded. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, it, it's about the only thing wrestlers can do to prove how good they are is wrestling. And, and not only that, but like one of the best examples too is like look at the new day. Look at what they did. They were brought out as like this preacher, choir type gimmick thing that wasn't working, everyone was hating them. And then they just turn it around like they hit a switch, and everybody is loving the new day. Like we still we still talk about the new day. Like, oh, how amazing yeah. they are, and we love them for that. You know. What I, else we got? I also out there? think well, to, to speak on that, I think you know Bianca's main event in WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, the the uh, I mean I think Swerve so got to be so Swerve Swerve is about to be the AEW champion if and then in about a week and a half Sasha will be the AEW Women's Champion. So I feel so bad for everyone. <laughs> She's about to take over that whole show and, and like she's skillful to see him pumped, man. Yeah. He's gonna take over the whole show. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, how big this is. I mean, look like look how big those two have gotten. Tricks like whole. Oh my God. Yeah. Trick. I'm excited for Carmelo Hayes too. Oh yeah. Yes. What else? What else? I gotta, I gotta roll out here. Yeah, get out of here. I gotta go. Ben Parker, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Now you know why I'm nagging you. I need to be here. Thank you. I appreciate you, man. I'll talk to you guys later. Everyone, one more time. If John Moxley ever left AEW, he would go back to WWE and ever reform the Shield for a Shield reunion again. Under the right spot. I, 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 I hope I have one word and two letters for you. CM Punk. Yeah. Who thought we'd ever see him back in WWE? So, like, we were just saying, like, probably under the right circumstances, yes, but then you mentioned the thing CM Punk and Moxley and Punk are on good terms. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it, but... How are you doing, sir? Hello. Um, ben, what are your like, favorite like European wrestlers like, currently in the scene? That all the time is currently. I mean, if I don't say Will Ospreay, I'm going to get fired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the man is legitimately the best wrestler in the world right now. Oh. Um, um, for me, one, one of my favorite currents is uh, Mr. Bob. I feel like from the European scene. Um, it's, you guys keep talking, I'm thinking. Um, I, you can hear the gears turning. I can too. 
<laughs> yeah. Who is some of your favorite current wrestlers? Well, I love Bianca. Um, I want to see, I'm not saying that she's my favorite, I, I'm really curious as to what they're going to do with Jade uh, in WWE. I, I actually liked her in AEW, I think she needs some training. Right. <laughs> uh, so one of the greatest things, so I take a lot of heel heat for this. Jade has the presentation. She does. She does. But in AEW, could tell that everybody was here. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, like, That's why I said, and, you know, with so, some So I'm glad that we're on the same page yes, on this because absolutely. every time I bring that up, like at any wrestling panel, because I've done this in other places too, everyone boos me when I say that. <laughs> she was she was bring across me and I mean yeah, yeah. I I've to to the the she's right. a friend, but like she does, she has the perfect but, look and the, the attitude and everything, but it's just what, what that I, she... But I've been hearing great things about what she's been doing down in the developmental and how she's All right, so, she's her hard so my favorite people in the European scene. <laughs> you got it now. Um, yeah. I said, I'll go to mention Osprey. Uh, Osprey, young boy, Cal Newman is super good. Uh, anybody here watch like Progress or Raya or anything like that? Yeah. All right, um, Spike Trevay. If you aren't a Spike Trey fan and you've never watched wrestling, he's one of the best heels in the business. Um, there's a there's a, a, a tag team from um, the, English, the English scene that doesn't get enough love called Sunshine Machine, which is Chuck Mambo and DK Cooper. They're awesome. Um, Ricky Knight Jr., Saray's brother, is doing great things on that scene now. Michael Oku, is awesome, um, and I mean, I'm, I, it, I mean, I'm wearing a scarf, so grit your teeth, man. Grizzled young veterans. I want to see grizzled young veterans in a ring with FDR. That would be the best match of all time. Um, grizzled young veterans are so good. They were so underrated and underused in in WWE, the fact that they made it to the finals of the Dusty Classic three times and never won the title was sick in me. And the fact that like Gallus walked in, even though Gallus was brilliant, like Joe Coffey, Mark Coffey, Wolfgang, they're great. Um, I'm glad Fred Seven got signed in TNA so we get to see him on television. Um, Tyler Bates is done. Tyler Bates is done. I'm so happy to be so glad he's back to Pete Dunn. He came um, back. He got his name back. Um, and uh, a, a person of mine, um, I know when he was with us a couple of years ago before he left the company, um, but I was, I had a thing going where I was tweeting every day, hashtag legal for WWE Hall of Fame. Um, and then he left for AEW. <laughs> but he's back now. Um, so we can start it up again? Yes. Yes. I, William Regal is my favorite wrestler of all time. Um, he's not the best, he's not the greatest, but he is solely responsible for the reason I watch wrestling. Really? My dad took me to my local guild hall in Portsmouth when I was five years old in 1983. And the main event was Stephen Regal against Dave Fit Finley. Oh, oh Finley, I love him. In a 45 minute wow. submission masterclass time limit draw. Wow. And I was that front row. Wow. Every month from that point, I would save all of my pocket money and I'd buy myself a five pound ticket, which is about two, it's about $7.50 at the time which in today's money is like $30. Um, and a big bucket of popcorn, and I would sit from row, and I would, from the age of five, I've been watching wrestling. And it is all because David Finley and Stephen Regal. Awesome. All right, so, so we'll suffice to say, Regal for all of them. Um, so we got about a little over five minutes left. And we're working. Oh. <laughs> what you got? What you got? So we keep talking about AEW and WWE. What do you guys think about the AEW like the side of the ring that no one talks about? 
the side of the audience. The black, oh my oh, yeah. god. Yeah. This has yeah. been an argument it's on wrong. social media. It's, I mean, you just, know, people keep posting pictures of the side of the, the hard side. Yeah, the yeah. hard yeah. side. side. So, so, uh, so here's the funny thing. Ben and I did a Power Rangers panel a couple hours ago. And when I see the stuff of like, oh, look at this and look at that when it comes to those crowds, it's almost like when we hear about who's the better Power Ranger, Jason or Tommy Oliver. Yeah. You know, it's just like that. It's all it is. It's literally one faction trying to make the other faction feel mm -hmm. down about right. each other. Like, right. I don't care. Like, I get it. There are legitimate attendance issues for AEW. You know, that's just because that's where their product is at right now. Not because they're not a good product, but because that's just where they're kind of at at the time being. It was gonna happen. Yeah, it, there's, I mean, ebbs, there's ebbs and flows in everything. Right. Like, like how, like if WWE does a house show, they're not gonna be drawing the entire house. Right. I mean, you they know, do, but. <laughs> I mean, I feel like Impact is really good. TNA. No, you call it Impact. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I told you. I don't like the fact that they went back to the Right, right. Like you want to talk. But Impact will sell out shows, and they're not really big, but they're, uh, to me, they're a great company. Not just because I work for them, but because I feel like they're a great company. Speaking as a person of banging the Impact drum since they became Impact, even like, during Revy Hardy to a pirate about hours. Oh um, I love Impact. I went out of my way. I, I wanted nothing more than to see an Impact show in person. Um, have I have now. Okay. Uh, Mike and I went up the last time they were in Philadelphia. And they're going to be there. Um, yeah, I'm we, we, be there we, too. we sat, we March, sat March 2022. Yeah, yeah. in 2022. We sat front row at the old ECW arena. <laughs> You should t that's where we used to have our House of Hardcore shows. Yeah. For you guys that don't know, I you know, I helped Tommy run House of Hardcore for the the ten year span that House of Hardcore I, 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 I will say this. Yeah. Round of applause for that. Yeah. I feel the need to get something off my chest. What they did to Scott the Moore is the Like on the mic and everything, you just 
He's just on I mean, you heard me earlier. I think Will Ospreay is the best wrestler in the world. Yeah. Uh, but he's come from a place in New Japan. His, 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 uh, he, he rose up in New Japan in the light heavyweight division, where no selling and stuff like that is fairly common. It's not, not as common as you was maybe think it is, but it's much more common than it is in the US. Um, I also think that we're in a position where AEW is in trouble. AEW is in trouble in a certain thing, where they don't have enough main event faces, right? Everyone in AEW gets cheered as a heel, right? John, MJF at the time, before he turned face, Swerve, who might have turned face. I mean, Joe's like, over, like, you still yeah, have the Joe. This is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah it's very. And even Osprey at this point is technically a heel, but he walked through that curtain, he's already the most over person on the roster, right? right? Which is why I think they're setting up this thing with the Callis family. Um, but as to his style of wrestling, it's just another style of wrestling, right? It's just some some people might love submission holds, some people might like flippy stuff, some people like strong style. I mean, it's just, it's just another style yeah. of wrestling. Yeah. Good so, that, yeah. yeah. Do you think that Jordan Grace is leaving? Gonna leave TNA? God, I hope so. <laughs> I love me some Jordan. I love. I, I love me the Jordan. I love her so much, and I was wondering. I really, I popped hard when I saw her. At I, her her, I was like, yes. The single. I'm very surprised. Shout out to my lower deckers in the back. Um, I did have one other. That's not. We don't. We we're, don't. We're literally, we're literally on time. So. Um, I will say um, the single best marketing line TNA has ever had. If they don't use it, it's stupid. Is Pat McAfee saying TNA is an absolute weapon as their champion, which is bombing. So, yeah. super quick, yeah. Uh, run through social media. Where can the people find you? Uh, the Original Gato on Twitter slash X, or the True Original Gato on Facebook. And she is also down in the, uh, the guest group area, the area next to Wes Johnson. Yeah. Uh, you find me at Bob T. Goldfish on Twitter. Um, you can also find Mike and I doing our awesome Mania podcast, which we is currently in the form of like a watch along podcast. We pick uh, a pay per view every month from the currently in the year 1999, and we watch along with it and we riff on it and we talk about it. It's designed to be watched alongside the pay per view, so that we're kind of like providing our thoughts on what's going on. Um, that being said, thank you very much for attending, everybody. And I would like to leave you with the following words. Please, if you like a style of wrestling that's different to somebody else, just let them enjoy wrestling. Um, and allow myself and Mike to leave you. In the words of the 16th President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, guys, gals, and binary pals, and all those beyond that spectrum, be excellent to each other. <laughs> and party on, my friend! Yeah. And until next time, we will see you ringside. And let yeah. awesome Kong know you want us back. Yeah. Yeah. No more two-year breaks, damn it. <laughs> <laughs>